This is Daniel Pinchbeck. Why don't you tell us who you are exactly? I'm the author of a couple books, Breaking Open the Head, that was about psychedelic drugs and shamanism, and 2012, The Return of Quetzalcoatl, which is about indigenous prophecies. We just launched a new social network called Evolver.net. Okay, so what uh, experience with psychedelics led to your exploring Mayanism? But one thing that happens when you explore psychedelics is that um, you have a sense that there are a lot of other options and other possibilities, other forms of consciousness, dimensions of reality, and that what we're living in is like, you know, not, not like the, the end of history or the best ever that we could possibly do. And the way I explored that was I went to different tribal societies. Like I went through initiation in, in West Africa with a tribe called the Bwiti, who used a substance called uh, Iboga. Uh, I also went down to the Amazon and worked with a tribe called the Sequoia, who used ayahuasca, which is a plant medicine. I had these kind of um, experiences that, that, uh, you know, that, that suggested you know, apocalypse and transformation, you become uh, very attuned to how unsustainable and artificial this, this civilization is. Well, eventually it's gonna crash. Right. And, you know, then it's either gonna just, everyone's gonna croak or we're gonna do something else, you know? Right. So that became, you know, I, I became kind of fascinated by uh, the, the prospect that, the, that, this, that these other societies you know, maybe had an access to knowledge that we didn't have. The Mayan elder was talking about the Apopal Vo, which is their creation myth. And in the creation myth, there are these different world cycles of creation and destruction. And um, he, he suggested that 2012 was the end of one of these cycles, and it's a point where the gods are kind of uh, making a decision on, on whether you know, we go forward or not. And that really depends on, on us making you know, a better use or full, more full use of our uh, innate intelligence as a species. Because at, at the moment, we're not using our intelligence uh, very effectively. So what is going to happen in 2012? You know, nobody knows what's going to happen. I don't pretend to know. You know, the, w the way I like to see it is we could see it as a, as a window of opportunity to catalyze a shift in global consciousness and, and society. Is there a possibility that we miss that window? Absolutely, absolutely. And I would almost say that it doesn't look great at this point. You know? <laughs> so are there other pieces of evidence? In it? There, there are that kind of point to this world or to this year too, right? Well, there's the, uh, you know, the, it's the end of a solar cycle. Quite a bit of evidence even, you know, from NASA and so on. You know, we've got a huge species extinction crisis. 25% of all mammalian species will be extinct in 30 years. All the tropical forests will be gone in 40 years at current rates of deforestation. The oceans are 90% fished out of large fish, so at a certain point we're not going to have any fish to eat. The whole economy in the state that it's in right now, do you think that's further evidence pointing towards some kind of event happening very soon? Well, I mean, it's already happening. You know, we, we've reached the limit of where we can go as a society in this direction. So the, the only hope is to shift from kind of a, a quantitative and, and material kind of orientation to one that's much more qualitative and, and interdirected and, and spiritual. And it's just extraordinary that that shift seems to be synchronized with what the, uh, you know, the, the, this ancient uh, civilization was, was suggesting or prophesying. Well, I mean, I guess all we have to do is just wait and see, right? No, no, no. We actually have to be totally participatory and, and active and How bringing about transformation. Uh, I really like the transition town model from the UK. So you get a group together, they begin to look at, uh, you know, peak oil, climate change, you know, the engineered economic crisis. They begin to organize their communities to prepare for, you know, what's inevitably going to happen, <clears throat> including relocalizing food production, we have to start reskilling people, um, you know, preparing for, you know, alternative energy, you know, systems. Uh, so actually get a group tangibly, a nucleus of people tangibly involved in this transformation process. And then you just keep bringing in more and more people. And then ultimately you go to the Chamber of Commerce and the local government. So it's not an oppositional process. It's like we just have to, you know, make, you know, ha have, have the scaffolding for, ma for making this type of transition. So that, that's what I'm hoping that Evolver.net, the new social network, will, will help with. And, and I guess the piece that I'm trying to add to the whole transition town thing would be this piece of shamanism, psychic evolution, consciousness. Because one way I look at, you know, what this 2012 thing represents, what we're going through right now, might be is a shift um, in species evolution from the biological or physical phase of evolution to the conscious and, and psychic phase. So if we don't take these kinds of measures, we're going to miss the window of opportunity that's coming up? That's my perspective. So how do you tell the entire world, hey, wake up, change things? We've developed this um, 
you know, global brain of the communications technology and the internet. So as we get closer to the threshold, we can communicate about this stuff uh, faster and faster. Uh, I'm, I really like uh, this guy Peter Russell has a construct uh, around it where he talks about how successive uh, revolutions in human culture and consciousness have been hap happening exponentially faster. So he thinks that the next age or revolution would be a wisdom age. So if you had agriculture in thousands of years, industry in hundreds of years, information in tens of years, you could get the wisdom in like two or three years. What does the year 2020 look like, best case scenario? In your um, well, I'd like to be hanging out with the benevolent extraterrestrial species. I think free energy is probably possible. I think we could also probably uh, have a massive extension in human lifespan. And you know, I think basically the universe is an art, is an art piece and an art project, and, and you know, we could become great artists contributing to, to the art project. I hope you're right, because I think it would be a lot more interesting than what's going on right now, that's for sure. I could sit here and listen to you talk about <laughs> this stuff for like 20 more hours, and clearly you could talk about it, but the better thing to do would be for all of you guys to go out and check out his works and buy the books uh, and, and check out the websites too, because uh, there's a lot to learn, I think, and, and a limited amount of time to get going. <laughs> so get going. <laughs> Thank you so much, Daniel. Yeah, I really appreciate it.